guys, it's Freshly Squeezed Gaming here, and today I'm going to be reading off some creepy and um, disturbing Mario and Zelda and basically Nintendo conspiracy theories, because um, today is Halloween, so yeah, let's get started with the first one. So the first one is the theory that Mario is a psychopath. Now, um, I'm getting all of my information from thegamer.com in this video, so yeah, I'm going to be reading off notes on my um, laptop, so yeah, I'll be glancing down every so often, so yeah. This theory, courtesy of the game theorists, might sound pretty weird to most Mario fans out there. In fact, it, it would sound weird to anyone who's ever heard of the franchise. After all, Mario is the hero. He has been for three decades now, but he very might as well be crazy. The idea is that this stout Italian plumber who goes around the Mushroom Kingdom stomping enemies, abusing animals, and taking all sorts of suspicious substances is a little bit off his rocker. Isn't too ridiculous once you think about it. Despite his childish, atheistic, and generally fun atmosphere, the Mario series does include a decent amount of violence, all perpetrated by our old friends. So, is Mario crazy after all? Well, he's about as crazy as you make him out to be. So, yeah, this theory is kind of reasonable. A lot of people would probably view Mario games like this, but... I probably won't. I, I, I don't. I just think of Mario as Mario as I've always known him. So yeah. So the second theory is the Legend of Zelda's Swats Tika maps. Let's take another look at Nintendo this time and examine one of the most disturbing conspiracy theories involving Nazi symbolism in the Legend of Zelda. Now it's understandable to be a little weary of suspecting one of Nintendo's most popular franchises of sneaking in any sort of distasteful content into their games, both all mighty internet would cast suspicion regardless. The game goes like this, the maps in the original Legend of Zelda game made up different images, one eagle, one a snake, another being a swastika, while the subsequent outrage following this discovery is understandable. The whole implementation of Nazi ideals is blowing the situation way out of proportion. Remember, J Japan is a Buddhist country, while the symbol has sadly been marred by the terrifying history it now represents. It was originally a symbol of good fortune in Buddhist culture. It's otherwise known as the Manji, so I get why this could definitely be controversial. It was the um 80s i think it was 80s when um legend of zelda was made and they did make some weird decisions back then with games like that so yeah so the next theory is the lavender town syndrome this has been really popular throughout the internet so yeah let's get into this paragraph here originally started as a creepy pasta this pokemon conspiracy theory won't die down and has continued to live on in the hearts of theorists everywhere. For those familiar with it, Pokemon's original Lavender Town theme was a creepy, unsettling, death march-esque song that derived from the cheery, energetic soundtrack. Lavender Town itself was a pretty dark inclusion into the Pokemon lore. Then there's the Lavender Town Syndrome Theory. The th story goes like this. The initial version of the Lavender Town theme contained certain high-pitched sounds that led children who heard them to commit suicide. This was eventually covered up and the original theme replaced by the one we're all familiar with, sans the suicidal tones. So yeah, that's basically that. It's been going around the internet for I don't know how long, but I think I've heard of it, but I've heard of the name, but never actually read into it like that. So yeah, the next theory is Luigi dies during Luigi's Mansion. Often overshadowed by his brother, Luigi got his shot at the spotlight in 2001's Luigi's Mansion with a definitively creepy atmosphere, often uncommon in other Mario games. Luigi's Mansion immediately set itself apart from other series entries. However, one of gaming's most frightening conspiracy theories comes from this title. The idea is that Luigi is dead originates from a scene in the game where Luigi answers a phone in the attic. 
as lightning strikes or creates shadow facing him visible to only the player. His shadow looks just like Luigi, though something is off. It seems as though Luigi has hung himself. Scary stuff and definitely way more mature than E rating suggests. However, the easiest way to debunk the theory is that the shadow is actually a glitch, making Luigi's shadow appear slightly higher than it really is. So which is it? Standard glitch or terrifying secret message? You decide. It, it could be any way because I've seen this in movies and video games and shows. These weird things that they put in there. Like the, um, I heard of the Wizard of Oz theory. Very similar to this. Well, there's a person hanging themselves in the background. I'm not sure if the video is still up, but if you want to, you can search it. It definitely looks like that, so, yeah. So, the next theory is the Animal Crossing Abduction. How can such an innocent-looking game have inspired such a terrifying theory? Well, once you hear the details, it might be a little more plausible to believe. In Animal Crossing, the main character is brought into the village by... Capin. Capin is actually a model after a kappa. What's a kappa? It's a mythological Japanese turtle monster that seals children for the last. Upon arrival, the player is put into a home and almost immediately after forced to work by the inhabitants of the village in order to pay for it. The whole thing has an eerie feel of things not being what they seem a common theme. Isolated communities where Unlike larger cities and towns, most people know each other alone, with a few secrets as well. What's worse is the cramped nature of the player's home makes it seem like it's an actual prison, kidnapping, child labor, and confinement. So yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting that Nintendo decided to do that. Especially with the Animal Crossing game. That's kind of shocking. So, getting on to this last theory it may seem ridiculous but once you read it, it kind of makes sense so the Illuminati killed Satoru Iwata this is undoubtedly the most ridiculous <laughs> tinfoil labyrinth to find itself on our list which is why it's such a great choice for the top spot former president Satoru Iwata passed way back in 2015 after severing complications from a tumor. However, some theorists aren't content with that explanation and took to a slightly more convoluted way of examining Iwata's death. The story goes that Iwata held onto a majority of power at Nintendo even as the company struggled. Some might have wished for his resignation. The theory then goes on to explain that the Freemasons control Japanese society through mindless fun, video games being one of their primary resources, and that Iwata was very much unwilling to go along with the charade. So thus he was taken out. His illness used as a cover-up in the video game world left shy of its one of its greatest innovators. So that theory is actually really interesting. Never even thought of it like that. The um, whole illness thing could have been made up, but I don't know. So guys, that is it for this Nintendo Conspiracy Theory video. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, happy Halloween. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.